I'm Grace. I'm working on a reputation currency based on some research that I've done with Eco Villages, and we're going to be doing a design sprint looking at how to do multi tiered reputational systems um, and the ideas that it'll create interoperability between, a, between communities rather than individuals, and that it won't be interchangeable for fiat currency and it'll be invisible to the current system because it's not interchangeable with the current system. That's what I'm working on. Uh, Thomas, uh, connection for the project. I'm working with the Eco Village Network in Europe, the, the uh, Gen EU network. Okay. So, cool. yeah. You can also go a little bit extra. We have one hour now. So, can you do this? Don't squish it like that. It's a very, very sensitive microphone. Next one, please. You want to follow those? Um, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm actually not involved in like specific okay. projects here, so I think, okay. yeah. Grace, yeah. you want to really make a project from this? <laughs> <laughs> I can show my, my project. I'm the founder of The Connective. It is a um, worker cooperative. We launched it uh, last year. And the main goal of the cooperative is to connect uh, uh, inno innovations and ecosystems in the alternative economy space. So, cooperatives, platform cooperatives, uh, blockchain experiments and infrastructure and digital commoning. And uh, yeah, mm, the basic idea would be that to, um, to have a, a, an ecosystem or ecosystem of ecosystems and to share resources in order to finance people doing uh, connection works all the day because it's, uh, it's quite a vital work. We were thinking about that with uh, Andreas yesterday. And it doesn't seem um, a function like the other because it's, it's not so concrete, but actually creating connection is quite vital. There are a lot of projects that uh, work more or less in the same field, but uh, don't know each other. Uh, so yeah, we would like to, to create an, org an, um, an organizational paradig paradigm to make uh, the ecosystem grow faster and better together. Yeah, so that's it. The connective dot network, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? It's just, it's just introductions. All right, hi everybody, I'm Scott Morris again. Uh, uh, I'm basically a token economist and systems designer for hire. I'm independent as of right now. Uh, recently, I was in South France with a good friend of mine by the name of Cameron Burgess. Uh, he has a firm, Armillaria, that does system design strategy and, you know, what I said earlier in the fishbowl about, you know, we have to move $50 trillion very rapidly, etc. We need a system that's designed for that. And uh, their thinking around this is documented in a document called From Billions to Trillions, which you can find at trillions.global. Um, uh, we were basically working on the next iteration of this document, right? Talking about outcome-based financing mechanisms, where DLT fits in, data architectures, all these bottlenecks that are uh, slowing down our, our legacy infrastructure, right? Have to be confronted and overcome. Yeah, yeah that's basically it. Uh, uh, normally, I'm repping a brand, but no brand today. It's great. <laughs> Who's next? Um, okay, I, I just said, I just introduced myself before, but uh, basically, I'm the communication staff for uh, Ramix and IJCCR. Ramix is the research association. Uh, for monetary innovation and community and complementary currency systems. IGCCR is in the, the International Journal for Community and Currency Research. And um, we are currently working on uh, a cost proposal, European Cooperation in Science and Technology, and the idea is to, uh, lan <laughs> to launch a cost action. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> 
Uh, this is to start the cost action on monetary ecosystem and monetary plurality. So if you want to join the network, uh, please um, just uh, uh, stop me and yeah, let me know because I'm collecting the, the names. And uh, yeah, I'm also uh, in the Freebies team, so Freiburg, uh, Freiburg, Freiburg uh, Institute for Basic Income Studies. And we have uh, a research team uh, with uh, Lisa, Gustav, uh, and uh, Circus UBI, that maybe some of you already know. And uh, what else? I think it's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Way faster than we imagine because usually people start talking for hours and we have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> you can take your time. Great. I can talk for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so, in fact, um, my project is not here. Um, actually, I, I wouldn't even know how to define what my project is because it, we're trying to touch so many things. But uh, if there is one thing where I live in, it's the Liminal Village. And uh, the logo is not here, but it's actually two circles intertwined. And that represents like anything that is considered to be different and the commonality. So that means system A, system B, for instance, or you name it, uh, music A, music B. Anything that is in transition and what we focus is right in the middle. So. What we are actually is a community that, the, that gets created every month. Uh, so we go with the lunar cycle, people come in, they get to know each other, co-create, and then uh, leave, and maybe some new people stay, uh, some, some new people come in, some new people stay. But what they do, the people that come, they're all very diverse people, so they are not uh, just developers. It, we actually have prerequisite diversity, so the more diverse, the better. Um, we try to kind of create this temporary community where um, we use technologies to aid ourselves. So in a way, we can call it like a computer-aided community, right? And um, what's the final, so that's why all the projects are not here. There are a lot of projects that we're working on, and I wouldn't even know where to start. But we are talking about ways to account for contributions, which actually destroy communities, by the way. <laughs> Just, uh, I want to reiterate what uh, Omi was saying before. Um, if there is one thing that I'm currently working on is really a, a, um, a new social network of some sort, because in practice, that's what we're looking for. We're looking at how do people connect with each other and uh, what can they, what project are they working on and which location hosts these projects. So in this way, we can uh, really flow, uh, have an overview of what's, and, and find each other. Well, a project that was hosted, the Liminal has contributors which were hosted somewhere else, which are working on different projects. So a way to navigate through this massive graph that is really a social network. But not only that, but also to share revenues, to share financially share what actually rewards you can get within your network of trust. And that's something that uh, it is pretty much a social system and an economic system. So it's a, it is a social economic system. And I can, um, yeah, I can show something uh, to, if, you, if you're interested on where we are at. Um, yeah, I think for now I'll just keep it at this. There are many projects since every month we might start a new one. So <laughs> um, I'll pass the ball. <laughs> Thank you. Hi everyone, once again I'm Rami Hai and I uh, represent the whole ecosystem that you see here from three organizations. Um, the first building block is carbon base. We're trying to use carbon credits and carbon calculation to sort of drive change, bring more investments into projects that matter and drive carbon markets at a different level. Um, through Project ARC, we're bringing NFTs for conservation efforts, and we're partnering with people that do things on the ground already, uh, like WWF, Beast Park Foundation, 
Jane Goodall and um, all that good stuff to bring more funding into that. And we're using the NFTs as a tool because they're, they've reached the mainstream um, market where they're really recognizable. Uh, they provide, I mean, a lot of criticism says that they don't provide value. Well, I would say that by putting all our hats together, we can create something that actually provides value for, for long term, not just to buy a JPEG, you know. And we're trying to do with uh, Impact NFT Alliance to galvanize all the efforts and bring more utility and more things into the space so that the NFTs actually matter and fund uh, projects that have a real impact. So carbon credits, natural resources, and in a sense, the commons for the NFTs, because uh, if you're doing things together, it's better than just doing on your own. Um, yeah, I'll pass the mic. Good morning, I'm Vincenzo Giorgino. I'm an economic sociologist at the Department of uh, social, economic and Social Science at the University of Torino, and I'm coordinator of the Wise Life Lab. And basically, we are oriented to integrate technology of the self, basically what we call contemplative social science, and the co-designing ecosystem oriented to uh, protecting life, essentially. And in this, um, in this period, we are working on a grounded theory of the commoning, and we'll present some preliminary results on uh, next Monday morning. And at the same time, we have some contacts in rural areas of the south of Italy, one in Sardinia and one in, uh, near Pestum in the province of Salerno, where there are some problems, uh, some from fire, consequences of fire, so the, the last summer. And we are trying to understand if we can be helpful to help these people to connect through a um, system of transaction based on digital ledger technologies with some contribution also from the outside because these areas um, involves also some tourism. And so we would like to integrate the two kind of economies, local based on olive, olive production on, and, uh, and tourists as well from northern of Italy especially. And the idea is uh, to create tokens uh, and um, to, <coughs> uh, to help with these tokens um, to change uh, the current economy because in one of these areas olives cannot be for 10 or 20 years no more the core or the, or the culture, not the economy only. It's also an existential. They have an existential problem as well. And this is fascinating and dramatic at the same time. So uh, we will ask some of you, uh, because we are economic sociologists, we, we developed with the Department of Computer Science uh, um, a platform, a web app. Maybe we can use that, maybe it's not the right one for different reasons that we can explain. And we can, if you're curious, we can go on commonshood.eu and it's a web app to create tokens for your own, etc. And then we have another project, the CO3 project with Athens and Paris, and we are testing it in the next month. Uh, maybe we will, we will try to use it in um, neighboring Turing with our orientation, I explained before, which is not the orientation of the full project. Uh, first of all, the project is based at the common, the data is the commons are intended as the property of the members of the consortium, voluntary association, uh, universities, and local institution. We would like to push it on the other people, participants of the association are the owners of the data. And you are invited to, but you are not the owner. This means that you need the blockchain and need uh, a plugin, probably with another one possible ubiquitous commons created by an, uh, an Italian colleague. Could be one or uh, another other system. We don't know exactly which is the best for. But this means they call a data cooperative, production, uh, productive data cooperative that can integrate 
uh, the system of transaction. And if they will be have a wallet, in that wallet you can add not only the transaction, but also your health data, for example, your, your green pass. And at a certain soil, this can be can have an economic value. It has a power value in the community because you know uh, the COVID-19, how it evolves, and you know it uh, right now, you don't need. In Italy, they say now in Lombardy, uh, the, the spread of the holy is, when they say now, they say 22 days ago because your data go to the pharmacy, the pharmacy, the national system, from the national system, your region, from the health district to the region, from the region to the ministry, from the ministry to the Institute of, of Super Health, uh, Higher Health, and then to uh, Academia de Lince, which is uh, um, a science a scientific organization that is supposed to get the data public. We, we are still expecting that. <laughs> so change it is also a really great challenge. Thank you, sorry for the time. I... Okay. Hello. Um, I'm Ome. I feel very weird to say that I'm representing anyone. Uh, what I feel comfortable saying is that I'm doing stuff with a bunch of people and we use a name to point to what we are doing. That's Bonfire Link. Um, we, yeah. <laughs> So it's been now three years that we've been trying to use, we started using crypto to organize uh, action uh, music uh, events, uh, not to rely on the legal structures that are usually necessary to set up an association, so using multisig and, and DAOs. Um, but now I would say that it, uh, and I resonate a lot with some of the opinions before that there is some, uh, um, uh, how to say, uh, activism uh, involved in here. Now I believe that there is a lot of uh, self-directed activism that I'm doing and that uh, other people are doing with me in this project, which is trying to uh, change how we experience certain things in our lives and to activate ourselves to do things that are meaningf meaningful to us. And in the process, uh, building capacity to figure out how we can have more of what it is meaningful to us. So we run uh, discussion uh, every week, um, but not just discussion, exercising also gifting, cooking for each other a bit like what we are uh, experimenting here. Um, and finding what are the, the tools, the methodologies, the, the ways of communicating with each other to uh, explore how to make uh, this uh, common and more real um, to ourselves more tangible and how we could experience that more in our lives. So I would say that we are practitioners of uh, commons. Um, we are uh, experimenting uh, with ourselves. Uh, we are uh, experimenting with different rituals that we can uh, adopt to maintain certain values and principles that we discovered useful in our everyday lives and to explore it in community and not trying to impose uh, ideas onto others but rather trying to inspire others into being more aware of how they experience community and what they can do for each other. So yeah, that's what we're doing. Um, I don't know in which way we can be related to any or all projects uh, here, um, but I'm sure that the discussions and many of the insights that I bring from my involvement with this collective um, that I experienced mostly in Geneva is going to uh, bring value to, to the discussions here. Thank you. Next. Was it this or no. Testing. Testing? It's for recording. It's not for the speakers. It's just called like the closed speakers. Just talk like this. So I can. Like this. Like this level is fine. Okay. Hi, my name is Eliza. I am a 
monetary reformist from New York and uh, also a commons enthusiast. Um, I am I'm here for partially representing trust lines or the trust lines network. Um, so I'll start by saying that like the guiding assumption of my work is that money is a commons and uh, trust lines is one answer to that. Um, you know, if you assume money is a commons, then how do you build a money system to reflect that principle? So trust lines is one of the ways that you could, you know, address that. And trust lines, to summarize it very quickly, is a peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, credit system or mutual credit system. Uh, you could look at it as like a few different ways. One way is that it's like very accessible, a uh, very accessible payment system that you don't need an ID or a bank account to use. Um, but you could also look at it as a totally decentralized monetary system, not just because of the decentralized blockchain that it lives on, but um, from the perspective that uh, it's decentralized in its issuance. So with mutual credit, anyone and everyone is sort of equal on equal grounds to issue money. Um, and we can talk more about trust lines later. Um, I'm also a universal basic income advocate, and uh, that concept of, um, that, that is actually how I got into what I'm doing now. Because uh, <laughs> you can look at basic income, not just as a social tool, but also as a monetary tool. Uh, and this also goes to address the question of money as a commons. How should money be issued into society, um, top down or bottom up? Um, so that's sort of the guiding forces to my work and who I am. And I've also worked on uh, different crypto basic income projects and done some research in that area, um, also on decentralized identity systems for that purpose. Uh, right. And then I do some other projects that this crowd probably <laughs> would find interesting um, in the crypto art realm. For example, a project called Graffiti, which is a combination of a of a, a, can, a, a public art canvas and the Harburger tax, uh, so we can play around with that. If anyone wants to learn more about that, um, and there's another project I worked on a, a few years ago called Astro Ledger, and this project is um, perhaps seeing renaissance now in the NFT golden age, but the, uh, the idea is that um, we wanted to build a, a decentralized way for people to learn about and appreciate astronomy. <laughs> and so you can name a star on the blockchain and all of the um, money goes towards uh, a pool for uh, uh, space grants. So this is a pretty interesting art project that uh, I'm also happy to talk about. Um, and yes, I think this summarizes me in a nutshell. So I could also probably talk for hours, but I won't. <laughs> I won't do that right now. Uh, thanks. In 2008, I said to myself, I'm going to be the guy that builds the software for the local exchange trading system network. Uh, if you don't know what that is, imagine many hundreds, maybe a couple of thousand local communities around the world, and they trade goods and services with each other, and they keep account with a local unit. And they've been doing this since the 90s, more or less. And I said, well, this movement is absolutely hopeless in terms of software. What they need is an open source thing, and then that will make it much more efficient. And now there's about 300 communities, mostly in France, using that software. And I maintain it um, with very little reward. 
In some ways, therefore, you could say this is a total failure of the project because it's, I'm the central point of failure uh, and we've never raised any money. But in other ways, it's a very successful project because it actually has users. And the reason it has users is because I went to the community, the network that already existed, and I said, I want to build software for you, and I want to build software with you. So I view my work as very successful in that. So um, they use a, a method of issuing the currency uh, in a different family from the cryptocurrencies. They use Austrian economics. And the let's uh, system thinks about money in terms of the credit theory of money. And the credit theory of money means that when you issue or spend a unit of money into circulation, you simultaneously promise to accept that later on in payment for your own goods and services. And that's a very decentralized way of issuing money. Uh, like uh, Alicia said, uh, you can call it mutual credit because you're issuing the credit to each other in the group and redeeming it and bearing the risk of that credit. And you work together in a group to manage that and you need governance to do that. So all of these let's networks are, are mutual credit systems. And I wanted, really right from the start, to connect them all together because they were completely separate. They're very locally minded people and uh, some of them would want to spend the money, their, their units that they made, in different groups. And others of them said, well no, this is a local currency, we don't want interoperability. But I thought, this needs to be a global network. We need to have a proper way for all of these diverse systems with different go govern governance and different uh, ways of issuing tokens and even different values behind the tokens. I don't mean dollar values, I mean values values behind the tokens. How can they exchange them for each other? How can we build a system that will scale and retain the independence and the pride and the separateness of all of these independent groups? So I designed the smallest thing on this thing Credit Commons protocol and I've built a reference implementation and uh, that's what I'm here to talk about and share. It's not anything to do with a blockchain. Uh, blockchains could connect to it, any software, any group could connect to it. Uh, it's there to serve the relationships and pre-existing trading relationships that groups will set up with each other. So it's coming from a very human side and not a technocratic side. Like there's no algorithms in the Credit Commons. It simply says, if you want to owe me some money uh, in a way that I'll pay it back, then uh, this is just how you record it in a ledger. And it does that in a, in a recursive way, which let's not get into now, but it scales through uh, recursion. You make groups and groups of groups and groups of groups of groups. And that way you build an infinitely large structure. I think that's all I need to say for now. Thank you very much. We we always travel in groups. Um, I thought I would uh, give a quick sort of situational. If you wouldn't mind stepping. Uh, we are kind of this cloud here, um, and there's a lot of organizations in this cloud, which is interesting because it forms kind of this uh, polycentric mesh um, of different capacities and different resources. Um, actually, Zia, I'd love to invite you up as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is just give a quick situation of how these are all organized uh, or interconnected, and then I'm going to hand it off to people who can dive into each one very briefly. Um, so, I'm Jeff uh, from the Common Stack. Uh, the Common Stack is working on modular primitives for uh, commons based microeconomies, general patterns. The TEC is an instance of that pattern. So, the TEC has taken the tools, the, the patterns designed by the Common Stack, and deployed them, uh, or is currently deploying them. All sorts of interesting stuff going there, going on there. The idea of the token engineering commons, of course, is to forward token engineering, uh, which is a larger community um, that uh, Block science feeds into with a lot of their um, sort of 
theoretical uh, and applied research gets sort of translated into token engineering components, which the common stack hopes to uh, not standardize, but, uh, but put out there for different groups to deploy. Uh, a couple more on here. Giveth, um, the common stack was born out of Giveth. Um, Griff will go into some more detail there. They're building the future of giving, um, some amazing innovation happening there. Uh, and of course, CAD-CAD, we can't forget, uh, is sort of the simulation and modeling engine uh, that allows us to do all sorts of computational experiments and computer-aided design, computer-aided governance. Um, so that is sort of the high level of how all these organizations interconnect. Uh, and I'm happy to hand off to anyone who wants to take. Anecdote, yeah, Z, uh, if you please. Cool. So, um, so I'm Z. I founded Block Science a couple years ago. I kind of jumped ship from my, my my corporate job and like said screw it. Started doing R and D on my own. Things I care about. I met a bunch of these folks and I started um, building my own R and D company. We did stuff and. Frankly, like probably the biggest achievement to date is that we developed CAD-CAD, which is an open source software that we use to kind of carry forward workflows from like large scale systems engineering and like way that you design complex systems in the kind of industrial era and try to shift them to a more ecological mode. But we still need the same tools. And so we were like, okay, but let's do it open source, built it on Python, integrated with the data science stack, and then just kind of brought forward that methods. Um, we use it in our design work, we do it in our, in our data science work, and um, I guess at TEGG, at Token Engineering Global Gathering in 2019, uh, Jeff actually gave a talk and kind of announced that it was being pushed into open source, and um, so that's pretty exciting. I think that's the most important thing for me to talk about. Otherwise, um, I develop and translate methods and tools with my actually pretty large research team now at Block Science, and we do our best to kind of mentor those skills rather than guard them. So um, we have a pretty close relationship with the token engineering community where we attempt to take what we learn and make it as available as possible and allow other people to iterate and expand on it. And so kind of pushing a more um, social institution part of the engineering practice. Like people talk about software engineering, we're really talking about like engineering engineering, which is the kind of group or like body of people who want to sort of steward the use of technology for human ends. And so kind of poking at the token engineering blob because we don't have Angola here yet. Um, I think it's super important for people to remember that like when you say engineer, you're invoking a sort of social responsibility to the public good in the use of technology. And so, you know, my part in this constellation has really come from the effort to translate the R&D in, in engineering and applied science into a more like open source, more bottom up view of, of, that, of that engineering practice as opposed to one that is like primarily informed by um, you know, regulators and licensure, but rather like a, a first order, like intrinsic motivation to provide, you know, applied science and engineering for um, public good and like for the outcome of everybody. So that's my little spiel. I'm going to go make salad. I'll play clean up. Yeah, but I, I want your short, 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 like yeah. 10 second trusted sitting. So the Trusted Seed is a <laughs> core community of the common stack, uh, essentially sort of a, uh, the, the DAO aspect of the common stack is the trusted community and the seed that will uh, hopefully birth a thousand commons. We need um, people who have these uh, skills, these experience in the TEC is the first reference implementation, but we hope there will be hundreds if not thousands and the Trusted Seed is invited to participate in a lot of these experiments and pass on the learning and the expertise. And I will pass yeah. it to Dan, who is the steward of the trusted seed. Yeah, I, I, I meant like the five second kind of intro from Jeff, not he basically said everything. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of tricky, but, but yeah, thinking about the trusted seed, it's everything Jeff said, but it's, we are 306 people right now, which is beautiful. I know a lot of you are in the trusted seed. Uh, who's trusted seed here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it will, it will be, I'm sending the application link right now to the group. <laughs> it will be nice to have you all. Anyhow, um, the whole thing is, you know, Token Engineering Commons came to life. That's amazing. We had a over, wow, it was like, how many people? Like 210? Well, 270 in total. Oh, yeah, yeah, with the builders and everything. It was, I mean, like a 
Yeah, 270 people from the trusted seat participating, aptly engaged in the token engineering commons. That's beautiful. Anyhow, like, uh, well, besides that, myself is just been designing all the mechanics behind this, like all the processes. And right now we're working on, yeah, you know, we scale a little bit the team, and right now we're working just on the other aspect, like uh, co-designing and opening up the trusted seat, taking some of the amazing, amazing learnings from the token engineering commons, like working groups and other things that we can do. So more from the, let's say, behavioral design kind of thing, but more human, come and let's go design in, in, instead of like an aspect of like, we're gonna design motivations and you know, like thingies into the system so you guys pa participate more. That's not the logic. The logic is just to gather the trusted seed to design for the trusted seed. Um, so yeah, and also the steward of the given house. So you guys come by to Barcelona, need a bed to crash for a couple of days. You're very much welcome down there. <laughs> Hello everyone. So I will just uh, talk a little bit about some of the projects we're working on and the new narrative that we're using, the new story to kind of tell uh, because our work is so multi-dimensional. Uh, so we are relating it to chakras, um, being as I have a background in studying yogic uh, science and philosophy. So the trusted seed is the root chakra. So like Dan said, um, kind of curating or uh, engaging with mission aligned commoners like yourselves and and getting them into this core uh, trusted group and as Dan said you know and Jeff said we'll be using that to um, seed many comments <laughs> and then uh, we also hope that they will be stewarding a pool of various tokens um, so working with um, a lot of different communities want to in to uh, align with the trusted seed and give tokens or or also ask for their help in stewarding or uh, helping with different advisory and knowledge um, for new and uh, upcoming communities and then there's the uh man the Swati. i only know the sanskrit anyway the wow. next chakra is commons deployments so this is kind of like the creative center it's birthing commons um, that's where griff is uh, leading the charge on that and then the Manipura, the action is our decentralized dev team, so the builders, the people of action. And then we have our heart chakra is our uh, public goods ecosystem accelerator. So we raise a lot of money, hundreds of thousands of dollars for many projects across the ecosystem through Gitcoin grants and other grants. Um, and yeah, and also that's the um, group that I'm kind of leading that's dealing with a lot of partnerships and working with other communities like Regen Network, um, who's working on ecological economics and land stewardship, and again, connecting this kind of like ethereal stuff to the ground where it actually matters and to see the real impact, as everyone said this morning, the world's on fire. So uh, hopefully we can speed that up a bit. And then there's the throat chakra, which is our communications, um, which is you know telling stories having meme parties and trying to share uh, the awareness of some of the things going on. And then we have our Ajna Chakra, which is the knowledge commons. So we're working on a library and also with block science to kind of start to bring all this knowledge in one place and also work with other projects and you to co-write. And um, we really, yeah, if you want to work on the library with us, we, we need somebody to drive it and help us do that. And then the crown is research. Um, which is Jeff's department, which is working with all these other organizations. And a quick shout out as well, because Angela's not here for oh, yeah. token engineering. I want to just mention the Token Engineering Academy. It's kind of like Hogwarts for, uh, <laughs> for Web3. Uh, and they're just doing so much amazing education in the space and, and bringing these ideas of validating systems design and, and uh, responsibility into creating economies and, sh and also doing open science initiatives um, teaching across the board and it's only two people running it with no money so yeah. we really want to support them and, and Angela will be here to speak for herself later but I wanted to give a shout out so um, look forward to hearing how you might want to engage with our different uh, areas of the organization uh, we are always happy to see how we can align through our heart um, and collaborate together so I'll pass it to Jeff with that <laughs> and I'll pass it to Griff with that <laughs> Yeah. The legal association part. Legal, the legal part? Okay, sure. 
Sure, I'm going to strap in because 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 I, I like to talk with my hands and I don't know I just get messy. Uh, okay, so legal side of the trusted seed. The trusted seed is really the human bridge between uh, the like. The, you know, our goal with the common stack is to create thousands of commons, and most of them aren't, shouldn't be focused on the Web3 world. The Web3 world is doing fine. Uh, honestly, we want to create these commons around rivers, right? Like six people that want to uh, have value, have their work valued for taking stewarding a river. But uh, those people stewarding a river don't really know how to work with bonding curves. So the trusted seed is kind of that human bridge that can be, uh, that can, if they're, uh, if they're aware of this group that wants to, you know, build uh, a, a value, a micro economy around producing value around this river, then the trusted seed can come in and support them if they care, right? Uh, so if some of the members care about that commons, they can join and bring the knowledge that they have of being part of all of these other previous commons. And that's kind of the, the place of the trusted seed. And we curate it to make sure that it doesn't have like weird people in it that are just trying to extract value. You know, like weird people are a plus, but profit, see profit seeking like, uh, you know, extractors, not so much, right? So uh, it's, uh, it, it's curated uh, in a centralized way because that's how it can be done well. And then uh, we also have a, it also doubles as a legal, uh, as a legal like structure, like a minimum viable legal structure so that the members of the trusted seed can actually be protected when they participate in another DAO. The dream here with this structuring is that the DAO itself needs to be able to innovate and legal structures when wrapped around a DAO actually restrict that innovation. So we do a separation of, of, uh, of whatever, and we focus on protecting the people, which is who, the people who are the ones who really need the legal protection, and let the DAO be free. So members of the trusted seed can uh, be protected in approved DAOs that the, commons, the board of the common stack uh, protects. And so we're still sorting out how we scale to multiple DAOs besides the TEC, but uh, it's in the works. And uh, I'll, I'll produce, I'll, I guess that rolls into the TEC. So the TEC's goal is to be, uh, to support the advancement of token engineering in general. <sighs> Sorry, I, I have gotten two hours of sleep in a 36 hour day, so uh, I'm a little slow, I can feel it. Uh, but the token engineering community is, uh, is a, a very decentralized group of geniuses that are working for free to advance token engineering. And the token engineering commons is a micro economy, probably the largest micro economy I see the common stack producing, uh, that is focused on actually uh, appreciating the value that's being produced. So you can say this economy kind of funds, the, well, hopes to fund this community. Currently, the TC raised uh, $1.5 million, so that's really great. Uh, we're, we're in the middle of the launch. Uh, it's uh, also the first uh, example of collaborative economics, which is the idea that actually the people from the bottom up can design their own economy. They're not stupid, right? People aren't stupid is the dream. Uh, you know, there, there used to be this idea of monarchies where it's like, oh, guess what? You know, uh, people are too dumb to govern themselves, right? We need to have kings that, that manage everything. Okay, yeah, well, we, you know, I think democracy is working out pretty well. So, but unfortunately, in economics, there's still complete centralized design and control. Even in the crypto space, all the work is being done in closed back rooms People, I mean, who decides if the interest rate changes, right? Like, who decides when money gets issued in an economy? And even in the crypto world, it's better because it's opt-in, right? But it's still a bunch of people in the back room designing the economies. Who picked 32 Ether, right? <laughs> like, I, I don't remember the vote. So uh, we're trying to do something different with the TEC and model this idea of, and I think it's, first off, it's a very privileged position to be in. It's the token engineering commons, right? So we have a bunch of token engineers that can actually, you know, without much education, can actually design economies. So I don't mean to like, be like, oh, Ethereum, come on, vote on 32 Ether. No, no, no. It's a privileged position that we get to model after to like kind of blaze a trail for collaborative economics and uh, create these dashboards where anyone can propose a full design of the economy 
and then we actually vote on it. So it's super cool. Uh, that's like how we're launching with this collaborative economics idea, and hopefully it'll model, uh, model it well for the other commons that come out of the common stack. And, uh, and of course, once we actually get the economy designed, it's kind of like a decentralized grant program that has a, a, an economic arm with the bonding curve, and then a value creation arm through conviction voting, uh, where it's kind of a grant program that will fund different projects like the Token Engineering Academy, CAD CAD, uh, likely uh, many other really cool public goods in the token engineering space. And the, uh, the, the idea is that this value creation will actually stimulate the economic arm, which will then fund further value creation. It's a nice little flow. OK, so that's the TEC. Uh, and then there's Giveth. So Giveth actually spun out, well, I'm wearing the DAO shirt. So uh, the, the, DAO, uh, the white hat group that hacked the DAO to rescue the funds, uh, we actually started Giveth together. And then Giveth became kind of a blockchain for good incubator. Bright ID spun out of it, DAP Node spun out of it, IDN3, and, and a lot of other smaller projects that don't have good name recognition kind of came out of Giveth and launched, including, of course, the common stack. And, uh, and now Giveth is like, it started as mostly just a, a charity crowdfunding platform. But now uh, we're actually going to launch a token, which will, rep which will replace the government service of uh, choosing which pro uh, projects are like nonprofit verified, right? So kind of like the 501c3 representate, um, um, use case. And replacing that government service and bringing charity into the Web3 world and, and advancing, getting blockchain into charities. And so uh, when you, uh, we haven't launched this yet, but we're very close, you will actually have uh, w what we call givebacks. So when you donate to a verified project on Giveth, then you'll actually get tokens in return, kind of like a tax deductible donation, but you don't have to pay taxes to get it. Hey, uh, which is good, not just because, hey, maybe you don't pay taxes, but maybe you're donating to a project that's in Venezuela. Well, they don't really, you, you don't pay taxes in Venezuela, so. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> no one does, no. Uh, so what is your tax deductible donation? No, so, but, uh, but still, we want to make charity a global uh, thing and advance the tech of charitable causes uh, because it greatly needs it. And yeah, that's probably enough from us, right? So thank you guys. Oh yeah. Yeah. Meta game. Hello. I'm Pete, working on a project called Metagame, which we categorize as a massive online coordination game. It's essentially a special purpose social network. It started from a project called Metacartel, which is a group of people giving out uh, grants to people building decentralized applications. And so we saw a need for a system that uh, onboards people to the ecosystem and helps them start their own project. So like bringing together all different uh, building blocks and uh, people to help and knowledge to, yeah, for people to start projects. But then the real goal is uh, basically, yeah, my main agenda is curating people and projects that are about building uh, a new sort of socioeconomic system. So like when I first got into crypto, I said, oh, like this is the technological infrastructure layer for the society of the future. But then, you know, like with each uh, cycle, it's been diluted and it's been more about, more and more about speculation and, uh, you know, hyper capitalism and, uh, yeah, pumps and <laughs> all of that ugly stuff. So we really want to bring back the narrative of like using this technology to build a, a society of the future. And yeah, bring it together all the projects that are working on such things. And then, the, yeah, the long term goal is. Yeah, have this uh, society in the cloud that's also connected to the physical spaces. So, like, bring together all these like uh, eco villages and places like this and the uh, liminal village uh, into a network of 
well, like an alternative economy where people can yeah, go between these different hubs and live in this uh, alternative economy. So basically uh, building this uh, future society in, like, uh, in, pa in parallel with the current society and that people can yeah, live there instead of in the current system. That's pretty much it. Yeah. It's uh, metagame.wtf and uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's here. The logo is here. The logo is here. We got uh, yeah, we got some nice projects also that are in the like the common stack. Give it token engineering. I need to talk to this guy. Project Arc. We've been already talking, but yeah, we need to follow up. Okay, uh, hi again, Robert, my name. Um, as mentioned earlier, um, I'm from Free Circle organization. What we try to do is uh, to implement all these great ideas in the real world. Uh, we want to do it specifically in Liechtenstein. Uh, we have put um, some parts already, some projects in, in the environment there, and we want to connect it uh, in a way so it forms um, social economy ecosystem running on a token, uh, which is you know, uh, free of speculation, but actually helps the community. Uh, freecircle.li. So um, what we already have um, is a platform for um, bringing local food from local farmers to local people. That's one part of the ecosystem. What we already have is a um, license to actually trade energy in Liechtenstein. We have a peer-to-peer -peer energy sharing platform, which you also want to plug in there. Um, we work on um, modular, modular living houses, which can be given to people where they can live. Uh, we have uh, other projects uh, in ideation phase right now. And what we are about to do in the upcoming months is actually um, start designing um, the currencies and token engineer the tokens uh, ecosystem in there, so we can actually make it run. Liechtenstein, as I mentioned, has a blockchain act, so they actually uh, it's it's a legally implemented uh, ter terminologies like like blockchain and, and token, what it means in the Liechtenstein uh, law framework. We want to use this. Uh, everyone in Liechtenstein already has a digital uh, identity. Everyone has an application in their phone with digital IDs. It's all running. And then this is the environment where we just want to put these ideas and make them work in the heart of the capitalistic world. You know, not many more places have such uh, amount of rich people in, than in Liechtenstein. And uh, as I said, um, if we make it possible in there, then I think it's possible everywhere. So we really are like in the battlefield trying to uh, take these ideas, make it work um, with people who don't know what Commons is what crypto is, you know, and the challenge for us is to explain them in a way uh, to communicate the added values and everything which uh, we may communicate so that they adopt it and actually use it nationwide. So that's our goal. Uh, there's a lot of things which we don't know how to do and we will be seeking for help uh, in uh, inspiration experiences um, and that's what we try to do. It's actually great because we are in touch with uh, people from the government, uh, with the lawyer who actually wrote the Blockchain Act, and there's many um, people with uh, influence who believe in this change. So uh, we are connected there. Um, the environment is, I would say, ready for us. Um, we will probably fail, as I said. Uh, but that will move us uh, further. We will gain some experiences, which then, of course, we will share with anyone else anywhere trying to do the same stuff. Um, but we just believe that's the right thing to do, uh, the right direction which the society should evolve, so that uh, you know the world we live in is sustainable. Um, so let's try it. Let's 
our mission. I'll hand it over to Jacob. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so I will follow up um, on Robert uh, because uh, I'm also cooperating or collaborating um, on the project. My role, I guess, is something between a librarian or researcher slash aspiring currency designer, I would say. And so my activities are kind of straddled between, um, yeah, between yeah, <laughs> this kind of line. So yeah, I'm also in the token engineering commons, but my home, I would say here, um, is in Holochain ecosystem. And when we speak about like token system, implicitly, I mean, we are using the term token, but we are also very much tending towards the more like credit-based paradigm uh, and trying to find the possible um, connections. Um, and yeah, since I said that kind of being straddled between those worlds uh, is a bit difficult for my brain. So one of my kind of mini projects was to try bringing promise theory to try to kind of semi-formalize the concepts um, and find if we could find some like common language to make it perhaps a little bit more digestible. So that's what we are working on with Mark Burgess, uh, like the originator of promise theory to try to diagram all those different token concepts, but also mutual credit based concepts and we'll see what, what happens. And last thing I'll mention, um, this is kind of a play project. We call it currency playground and we use like a 3D environment in Rust Bevy and we want to just interactively visualize very simple kind of currency design patterns. So not, not for simulation, but just like to help people play with, I don't know, let's say you can create a brewery and set up a mutual credit system and illustrate it in like a game environment. So this is one of our projects. And if anyone wanted to cooperate, that would be cool. So that's for me. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Gustav and uh, yeah, since 2016 I've been around the block a bit in the crypto and community currency space, so also a little bit like Jacob a bit in both worlds. Um, first I started out in, uh, in trust lines at that uh, mutual credit project uh, and also been involved in, uh, or still, still am, in uh, the common stack and, uh, and my, of course the trusted seed and Ran some campaigns, of course, on, on Giveth as well. <laughs> Member of Metagame as well. <laughs> um, my day job right now is at uh, a blockchain called Nier, which is uh, a third generation blockchain, very fast, very cheap. Um, the main reason I'm here probably is uh, as we started the uh, Community Currency Alliance. Uh, and that's basically just a Telegram group, more or less. Uh, the goal with that is just to be a neutral ground for uh, community currency projects, some that are, you know, blockchain fanatics, some that prefer just physical notes, some that maybe are using, you know, uh, some Web2 old database system. So uh, we have, my guess is, around 100 different projects around the world in there. Um, and that's just a neutral place to, to meet each other and to, uh, you know, learn from each other and, and, and connect with each other. So, uh, yeah, if anyone want to join that, let me know. It's just a Telegram group. Very easy onboarding. Um, yeah, looking forward for interesting conversations. Hi, so yeah, um, I'm Chris and uh, I thought maybe I should also just come up here. Uh, I joined pretty late and so the logo is probably not on here, so currently I'm working more and more for uh, the Gitcoin DAO. And um, before that, like, yeah, pointing out the logo is just easy. Common stack, uh, Giveth, Metagame, I'm a little bit in, but mostly the common stack and Giveth ecosystem, I guess, up till now. And um, yeah, so I recently joined as, as a, a Gitcoin steward. Who is a Gitcoin steward here? One more, yay! Two, yes. And uh, who uh, who got like the the GTC airdrop because they donated to Gitcoin? That's a yeah, yay! Congratulations, <laughs> quite some people. So uh, that's of course just the start. Um, but uh, Gitcoin has has with the Gitcoin DAO that they launched a fantastic project to really start 
yeah, open reaching so many people and bringing funding of open source and public goods in general to the world. They, I think, to me, I might be a little bit biased, but I just got in, so I'm still not too biased. Uh, they still feel like um, the project has, that has such huge brand recognition and brand awareness, everyone knows Gitcoin, respects Gitcoin, and there is so much energy in that space. It's very scary, to be honest. I've got to be like, I didn't prepare this, I'm just improvising here. It's a bit scary because there's so much to do. There are so many people, um, and we need more people actually, but we also need some organization and structure. We've already been talking about this with some people uh, this morning. We need very, we need active stewards who actually start managing this big project that can bring like funding of open source and public goods to the next level. Um, so I'm really happy to be here and get more inspired. I'm already like basically bouncing off the walls by the inspiration I'm just getting by hearing about all these projects. And uh, yeah, in, in the beginning, I think the thing that brought me here today was actually love. I'm going to be honest. I, like It was not talking, if you know the meme, it was not uh, talking prices, sm uh, smoking and flirting. It was not flirting, it was love. But I think love is a good starting point to be here. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I want to talk way more about uh, all these projects and all the things. And um, yeah. Up to the next one. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Adam. I'm not going to talk about currencies, but I'll talk about a few projects and in general talk about values instead. Um, uh, some of the projects, uh, I'll talk about the project of uh, Dyne.org itself and some of the things that it's been doing uh, of late that's pertinent here. Um, Dyne's been involved in a flagship European research project called the Decode Project, which touched on themes of um, uh, appropriate uh, identity and verifiable credentials in the uh, public service and public participation spheres of various um, urban uh, environments, including Barcelona and Amsterdam. And uh, through some of its crypto core components, allowed uh, verifiable uh, properties of people to be revealed without necessarily uh, intruding on privacy or um, other uh, details of uh, their their personhood, and uh, using a similar back end, uh, another project uh, called the Reflow Project is using um, this crypto component called Zenroom to promote circular economies and to be able to validate and use zero knowledge proofs and other modern crypto uh, concepts to help with the integrity of tracking uh, circular economies and circular material flows, so to speak, um, throughout the life cycle of, uh, of our industry and work when we are producing things, but also for intellectual property. So when, when uh, in, with respect to licenses and uh, code and digital works of, of all types. So I just thought I'd throw those two projects in. In a, in a, a similar way, uh, we've also uh, got involved in another project involving distributed manufacturing uh, through Fab Labs, through Maker Labs, and uh, extending that perhaps into uh, local uh, small-scale engineering firms within the traditional capitalist model of, of making stuff, designing and making stuff. And, you know, the the uh, mapping between atoms and bits in the similar sense to the reflow project and before with the uh, decode project to insert an amount of um, uh, integrity within the flows and the process of materials and, and actors and resources and uh, with those events be able to bring some amount of human auditability, traceability, and uh, trackability into some of these concepts and values of circular economies, um, the, the, uh, the uh, acts of uh, repair, recycle, and reuse in terms of these circularities, and so on and so forth. I think I'll stop there, but uh, on a personal note too, 
uh, with everyone's uh, discussion so far, I'm very interested in discussing here and, and evolving ideas of uh, consequences and scale. So bringing in all the wonderful ideas about currencies and different schemas to perhaps reflect on the sacred and profane as scales of these systems, these models that we build uh, have impact, what impact do they have on um, the social, the political and the human? Thanks. I'm presenting another project which I'm collaborating to. Uh, which is not here because it doesn't have a logo yet. It's called the Cop Valley from Damiano Vellino, which one of you may know. And it basically wants to be a giant uh, venture builder for cooperative startups in Bologna, in Emilia Romagna. And he's already obtained funding from Lega Cop and other um, projects like Hypernova and Platform Design Toolkit, which I'm talking later soon. And basically, uh, with Damiano, we wanted to create um, a locally based but global ecosystem of uh, no, um, hard knowledges like uh, business development, platform development and so on to gather ideas from the crowd, uh, developing uh, platform cops very fastly and launch them on the market by helping them with funds of the co cooperative uh, unions and credit uh, cooperatives. And yeah, so it starts in uh, 20 and 22 next year. And um, so, yeah, we'll let you know soon. I, I am the guy that should be responsible of connecting the cooperative movement in this specific project with this crypto commons ecosystem. So we hope that we'll uh, foster many connections because I think that, uh, uh, I mean, the, the cooperative movement is, um, is enormous. It's like 10% uh, of the economy, but if you don't consider just the money, it's way, way more. And um, it's quite uh, not updated to Web 2.0, <laughs> so we have to wait, go there, and then we will we'll also think about Web, web 3.0. But uh, uh, I think that the, the main focus here is, and I want to bring it to the event too, and I will talk to you uh, infinitely about this, becoming uh, um, entering to the age of platforms and getting platforms organizing models because um, another pr project I'm presenting, but I'm not part of them, is Platform Design Toolkit. Maybe someone knows, it. okay? And we are friends with them, we invited them, but uh, they are on holiday, so they are not <laughs> participating, but it's okay. And um, yeah, I heard many discussions these days about the governance of uh, crypto projects, for example. And uh, from my perspective, that I'm, I studied a lot these uh, platform business models, is, uh, I mean, if you don't have an organizational model that works, uh, nothing will work, no, no matter the technology tokens or money you have. And so, yeah, um, will be my mission in this gathering to first connect you all with uh, the respecting needs, but uh, especially to making you aware of the platform uh, economy and new platform paradigm, because I think it, I'm quite sure it will impact everyone as we are uh, um, shifting from having projects doing one thing to having projects that are basically defined with their functions in their ecosystems. So you're not just a project, but you are a function in an ecosystem or ecosystem of ecosystems. So yeah, let's uh, face this complexity together. Mm, thank you. Is there anyone else? Two for humanity. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Cool. Hello, super exciting to be here, first time ever. So we are from Proof of Humanity, uh, which is a cyber proof protocol to register humans on the blockchain. And we are a um, project that has been launched quite recently, but with already uh, more than 8,000 human beings registered. Um, we stream a token, the UBI token, which is streamed uh, one per hour. So every human being registering Proof of Humanity gets 720 UBI tokens uh, in a month. And right now this equals to around $35, which is not that much in our terms, but um, for a village in Kenya, for example, it's life-changing. So what we're doing um, 
besides being in our proof of humanity bubble, we are also uh, part of BN, the um, Basic Income Earth Network, because there are actually many projects that um, aim to give a UBI to people. And uh, what we try to do is see what the, are the challenges of these projects, and maybe we have the solution. So to gain in this uh, difficult game, uh, what we decided to do is actually uh, cooperate all together to find a solution how to reach the unreachable, because this is the goal, reach the person who doesn't even have a phone. So um, besides that, we're organizing a hackathon just to get some fresh ideas in, um, because the price of, UB of the UBI token has to go up. So this can be um, a great way to do it. And um, we've been doing also some Mooncat uh, accessory art because we found out that it's great to put a percentage of the sales inside the UBI vault that helps the price of UBI. And Umberto will tell more about the vaults. Yeah, thanks. So the vaults of UBI are piggybacking on Yearn Finance. So basically the UBI Yearn vaults are like a top layer. Uh, we have two now and one more in development. Uh, the first one is in, for DAI and the second one is for WET. So basically what the UBI Yearn Vault does is that the Yearn Vault, vault chooses the best uh, profit strategy for the, that Yearn, vault, Yearn Finance has and then streams that. So it's always looking for the, for the most profitable strategy and then that's the one that you are getting by putting your money into the vault. And what this vault does is that 50% of the profit of the interest, let's say, of the yield gets burned, to bu buys UBI and burns it to help maintain the price. And the other 50% goes to the, put the person that puts the money. So in this way, we allow that philanthropy, for example, uh, allows to make more money to help the whole ecosystem rather than just distributing the money and diluting it. So this is something that, that has been done. And on the 1st of September, we're going to have a, a call with the developer that did this top layer, uh, Emiliano Bonassi, that he is part of the Yearn Finance uh, community. Um, and so everybody is invited. Also in here, we're, we're going to have a registration workshop to uh, clear doubts about Proof Humanity, how to register, and if you don't have any um, ETH or you are short on ETH, uh, we are going to tap uh, into the community of uh, Proof of Humanity because we have a group that is called Rolling Funds that was set to enable the people that do not have ETH to register them so that they can start ripping UBI. Um, yeah, so we can tap on that community. And well, that, that was about uh, Proof of Humanity and UBI. We, we are going to have also some podcasts and everyone is invited. We're going to have podcasts, monthly podcasts about identity, about UBI, about governance. And so everyone in here is invited so that we can together think the challenges that we are facing and need some synergies so that we don't think on my solution is the best against other solutions, but better try to aggregate solutions to make something that works in the long run and for everyone and not being uh, like protective. Well, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very I got my mommy to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'll talk about two projectual things that are essentially open. So I think that uh, if you're interested in them, uh, either uh, as until you come talk to me, the doors are generally open uh, and, and also open to different opinions. And the first one I pick is, so my background is I've been working as a, you could call a structural designer in economic space agency for, I don't know, four or five years, I think. Uh, and um, but that's kind of my field has been like especially organizational architecture, um, and and also as mentioned in the morning session, my back background to that is games, and and one of these um, latest experimental directions is 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 to try to let's say to increase the 
palette of how do we design organizations, uh, both uh, like looking at the possibilities that come from crypto, crypto, but also of course looking organizational history. And, and finally, uh, this was something of um, like a modeling discovery in, in, in my EXA work it was that if you actually take organizations down to Lego blocks and you take game, games down to Lego blocks, you come up with the same Lego blocks. Like essentially, if you think a chess game is a contractual organization between two people, it's a weird way of thinking about it, but it works. Like in terms of how you structure that game, well, people have rights to move the pieces, etc. But that works for any game. And it also then reflects back to organization. So in a way, you could think like in the horizon, that what we think of as a convention of design called organizations and the convention of design called games kind of come from very similar structural principles. But that's an interesting avenue because there is a whole lot of interesting, uh, often you could say artistic structuring in games. Um, and you have tens of thousands of point systems. What can they say for tokens? Because they actually reflect the structures. And for this, like the surface you could touch upon is like there is a, a group called Exorc, which also has a Telegram group, which you can just join and it has meetings every week. And there is a kind of a bubbling idea of developing some kind of a release publication of um, ideas towards this. I won't go into the details, but if you're interested, come and ask. And uh, so that's open. The second one is another uh, rather more recent, uh, let's say it's been bubbling in the last couple of months. And it's, it's roughly about the idea of, you could call economic arts. And um, by that, uh, <laughs> To squeeze a complex topic into a small thing, um, um, first of all, like the people joining uh, to kind of develop this idea both come from crypto side, economic side, and art side. So there are people who are more curators uh, from different places. There's in England, Fr uh, France, Germany, etc. But uh, but of course, for from crypto. Um, developers, etc. And But the key point here is that, of course, there are meeting points between arts and crypto. We can see NFTs. But if you trace back, say, decades, there is a common, what I would think problematic, is that art is very awkward with systems. It can meet faces, surfaces. And it wants to turn things that are actually inherently system, like have, have an inherently system-like nature, like an economy, into can you make um, this picture in your gallery and then make an explanation on the side of it. And it actually likes NFTs because NFTs is once again a surface to show or they kind of emphasize that. But ultimately in the long term, there is an unhealthy quality to this, which is that arts doesn't really encounter what it is to be in a system like an economy, what it is to participate in it, um, what it is, uh, what is the thing that you cannot squeeze to a surface. So essentially the project is um, uh, in the, curators that have the interest and the courage to start the conversation that actually how could art encounter these system-like beings, like economies, as they are, and how could economy, including crypto economy, encounter the possibility that in a way like uh, it's not just about prototyping, it is actually about exploring forms. The forms don't, don't have to be optimal. They might be looking for diversity, which is a quality in arts in itself. Now, why would this be important? I'm not saying it's just everything, but I think one of the key problems in, um, in the many problems we face, because as it was said in the morning, we are sort of fucked. But, um, but, but we have to be construct constructive even if we are fucked. That's my take on that. So, so one of the problems is that, first of all, we're missing a cultural literacy of even joining this kind of new economics. It's not just in, in the mind of most of the people. Uh, we could already do a lot with current tools if people would join it. But to build such literacy is not just let's connect the masses, because there's not really any more masses. It's rather building in different fields uh, discourse 
um, about how economy could be different. And one of these fields is arts. It's not sufficient in itself, but it, it is potentially useful, and it's a field that is highly open to experimentality. So that's the key thing we're building with kind of uh, in collaboration with art functionalities and crypto functionalities is to build first a communication and works that would really start asking for art or challenging art uh, about the existence of a system and uh, creative systems as a core component of our culture. And, and how such a topic could be brought into discourse. And that's, once again, it's bo uh, because it's bubbling up. You're, if you're interested in that, the doors are open. Come talk to me. Um, and uh, if you have very weird ideas, that's probably a good thing. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Josh. Um, I have two projects, or no, three projects to talk about. Um, one is uh, the podcast that I run called The Blockchain Socialist, um, which you can find here. It's just a podcast where I talk about blockchain and left politics. So if you're interested, check it out. Um, but the main one that I want to talk about is Breadchain, which is this one here. And it's a project that came out of basically the community that started around uh, the podcast and like people who were sort of left-leaning and wanted to find a way to um, use blockchain in a way that sort of um, reflected our values. Because um, I think the sort of obvious sort of criticism that this space really gets is, of course, you know, everyone's a right-wing libertarian. Everyone wants to just like extract money out of you until you're like uh, deflated and, you know, all the bad things that are sort of out of that. Um, so our task was to sort of try to find out, okay, like, is that actually true? And can we find ways that actually sort of reflect our values, um, sort of align closer to socialism than like this rapacious ca capitalism that we all sort of live under? Um, so that's Breadchain and uh, sort of out of that, Breadchain is sort of set up as a cooperative. Um, so uh, I'm a big fan of cooperatives. I sort of think of cooperatives as like mini socialism, sort of workers owning the means of production in a very, very tiny sense and sort of like islands within like this big sea of uh, what we call uh, the global economy. Um, so we're set up as a, as a cooperative and the, and the hope is to build it out into a type of cooperative of cooperatives. So um, new uh, pe people who want to start um, projects that sort of reflect the similar values um, can sort of apply to join and then we can sort of all share our uh, resources amongst each other and sort of some have some sort of like democratic governance around how we split those resources to fund people to work on those projects rather than like you know having to work for um, corporations or, or how, what have you. Um, so the the first uh, web application to be um, produced is hopefully going to be done during this uh, conference. I can't promise, but uh, we're really hoping. And then at some point later in the conference, if you guys want, I can show you how it works. But um, essentially, it's a smart contract. I mean, fairly similar to um, what you guys were talking about from person, uh, proof of personhood, actually, or proof of humanity. Um, but basically, uh, as a user, you can um, send DAI to a smart contract, and then that smart contract gets uh, forwarded to a compound lending pool. So you're sort of like giving them permission, giving us permission to lend out your DAI, and then interest is accrued, and all the interest accrued is given to the cooperative. Um, but what's really neat is that as a user, you receive one-to-one -one collateral in what's called a bread token. So that sort of represents your um, what, what you've given. And now you can use that bread token to um, either burn it so you can receive all your die back. So in a way, you're, you can give money without losing any money. Um, or you can essentially use the bread token as a type of uh, basically how you would use die, right? If, it's, if you can always change it out back for die, then basically it's always equal to the value of die. It's always the same as die. So it basically, at the end of the day, it sort of serves as a uh, local currency, except it represents that you support the cooperative movement or you support like the principles of uh, the bread chain network. Um, so uh, that, that's sort of our first web application. If you're interested in talking about it more, let me know. If you want to like partner on different stuff, um, totally open. Um, and Orion is, is helping that, yep. helping with me on that. <laughs> I don't know if you want to add anything. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about my own stuff a little bit. Um, just the one thing I will add is that I think the thing that excites me about it, um, and I'm sure this is the same for other people here, is I think it's really hard to, to overstate how much of a benefit it is for people to actually like experience these things. Like when we talk about, say, democracy or like uh, democratizing the economy, 
um, I think that you know one of the best things that you can do for that is actually give people ways of experiencing that themselves. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's the main thing. For me personally, um, I'm mostly working on research um, and like very quickly and broadly, I'm um, kind of looking at questions like how can we um, kind of collapse the divide between like programmers and users, right? This thing that we kind of take for granted um, and doing that in a way that's not, not by like making programming worse, right? Or giving people like something like Squarespace, right? Like that's not the same thing. Um, so really like raising the floor for everyone that interacts with computer uh, computers, no matter what their background is, um, up to the level of, you know, programmers essentially and, and hopefully higher. Um, and then in terms of, uh, yeah, and so the other part of that research is kind of exploring what, a, what, a, what it looks like to, to go like beyond software, which might sound a bit strange. Um, and maybe there's some, there's some semantics in there, which might be a bit confusing, but, um, that's a question that I'm, that I'm exploring and it, I'm obsessed with it. Um, and in terms of things that I'm building, the main thing right now is a sort of a, like a, I guess you could call it an interchange format. Um, or it's a, it's a way of representing information or knowledge that aims to be interoperable at a level that's not, um, is kind of outside of computing first. Like it's, it starts in a more theoretical space to hopefully make things that can be more interoperable and kind of get all of the stuff that we've already built to, uh, to kind of work together better and maybe kind of all merge into some, you know, giant global commons of computing or whatever. So, yeah, sweet. Hmm? And then I think the last thing we want to talk about with uh, is from Oliviero, since I'm helping out with the documentary. So, hi, I'm, I'm Oliviero. Um, I will be the guy that stresses you in front of the camera, so don't hate me. Uh, and I'm here with a splitted personality, like as an enthusiast with a short-term goal, I want to testify and uh, document this beautiful gathering, also to have to communicate it and to attract other people into the discussion. And I'm also here as a noob. Uh, when I told my friends where I would go, they stopped listening to me at the word crypto. And so my long-term goal is to make uh, a documentary that helps to attract the wider public to the topic. Uh, also because you, lots of you guys were talking about um, being fucked and about uh, a, like a depressive situation. And it's not just you that are feeling like this. Everybody's feeling like this or lots of us are feeling like this. But hearing that there is like new ideas, new movements, new technologies, but also like really new ideas, it's mind changing for a lot of people. And I would like to, well, to make it accessible. So I will later on ask you to come with me. We prepare a room upstairs and we will ask you some. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have three cameras, so we get it from the other perspective. It's even worse than it's my bedroom. Exactly. <laughs> Don't tell that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we'll ask you some questions upstairs and then maybe here during uh, one panel uh, between one panel and the other um, and we will try to put together like the story of the gathering and then maybe I hope so um, like to, to amplify it and to go uh, to come to visit to you where you have your projects and talk to you uh, where you are working and to make it like a full uh, feature documentary. So we'll see. But let's start from here. Okay, thank you. Maybe just the, the one question that we want to ask for, for everybody through like while we're interviewing people is what does the Crypto Commons means to you? So think about that question and like what your answer would be so that when we ask you, it's not like, uh, and then you're like thinking on top. So letting you guys know ahead of time so that you can think about it uh, and pre prepare the best answer, uh, of course, possible. <laughs> Is there anybody else? No, I'm not feeling that. I, I, I can do one minute. Okay. 
Um, so I'm Andreas, and as mentioned before, I work with a couple of projects, and uh, particularly co-ops, platform co-ops in Berlin and beyond. And uh, the one I want to talk a little bit about it is Platform Co-ops Germany, because it's sort of like an umbrella, um, the network which uh, puts all of those uh, co-ops together. But before, maybe for um, the ones who are not so familiar with the term Platform Co-ops, just as a short clarification, um, co-ops, basically they are collaboratively owned and governed uh, entities, because people they can uh, basically participate in the operative decision making. So like you know, who do we employ, for example, but also they get a share and a say in the uh, overall value that's created and that's been distributed. So at the end of the year, most uh, of the co-ops, they decide with all their membership um, how, how the um, profits are being distributed and so on. Um, and um, whereas this is the, the, the co-op, um, the platform just um, uh, in advance um, shows that um, such platform co-ops are utilizing uh, digital business models or um, governance protocols that are uh, happening in the internet. So they are kind of advanced uh, compared to those uh, old school and for hundreds of years existing um, co-ops. So um, yeah, having that said, um, we, we founded Platform Corps Germany um, by 2019 to create the uh, digital cooperative uh, economy in, in Berlin and also in Germany, because we felt it's um, by now really needed to support all those uh, small projects that, that are most likely coming out of the um, sharing economy or um, uh, social economy, but who have usually not really a chance against those uh, big players. And particularly in the years of 2013-14, I've um, worked with like 200 uh, social uh, entrepreneurs in Berlin uh, with um, social and environmental missions, but they all failed because of Silicon Valley money is usually um, destroying their business models or the channel towards um, customers or participants and so. So that's why um, we, but also like those entrepreneurs, they, they, they moved on to this uh, cooperative business model where you can participate um, and, and you know, really engage your ecosystem. And um, what we do uh, very concretely with um, Platform Corpus Germany are um, four uh, pillars. One is community building. That means like we run a regular call series um, where we explain about uh, Platform Corps. Um, how to found them, um, and uh, yeah, also how, how to um, you know create um, your own communities for your particular project. Basically, that's what we do with uh, Mondragon, with uh, the New School, um, and, and other partners. Um, the second pillar is that we consult uh, founders and, and, and projects um, in um, starting their own platform co-ops. So last year, we, for example, have helped Circles, the blockchain UPI um, project, to become a co-op. Um, the third, um, um, yeah. <laughs> the third um, uh, pillar is that we also do infrastructure work. So um, we actually also um, engage with uh, policymakers uh, in Germany. Um, just um, created a, a petition with uh, the Social Entrepreneur Network Germany together to um, embrace more um, digital practices within the co-op world. Because if you really look into it, the co-op world is like as fucked up as as the, the normal economy. It's very top down and hi hierarchical. So that's not really what what we want to uh, push for the future. Um, and the fourth uh, column is an um, innovation network that we that we run uh, with a couple of uh, software companies. Um, Circles is part of it, but also Poly Poly. Some of you mentioned uh, Data Corps being interest, interesting. Uh, that's Poly Poly is a really interesting case. Uh, you should look in. Um, and uh, what kind of keeps me optimistic is like uh, that all the topics I mentioned now, and particularly this innovation network, is now funded by the uh, Ministry of Economics in Germany, and we get some recognition. So that kind of tells me that um, we are on the right track, and that. Um, that those ideas, they are actually needed because uh, those guys who are in charge now, they, they don't have solutions to the problems and now they are looking into our uh, directions. And um, yeah, maybe that's it for now. <laughs> So hi everyone, uh, my name is Ruk, uh, or if you have trouble pronouncing the Slavic R, you know, rock is fine as well. Um, so well, here I suppose in terms of this little uh, representation here, and partly of why I'm here is uh, I've been working with the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation for the past uh, couple of years. 
Um, and uh, yeah, we recently wrote a paper with uh, folks from uh, around this area here. Um, uh, and yeah, if, if you guys have any questions regarding peer-to-peer -peer foundation and recent work, well, we can uh, discuss that. But here I wanted to highlight a more personal passion project that I'm uh, kind of interested in experimenting with here. Um, it's a game, uh, a word we've uh, heard quite a few times here today, which I'm really uh, glad about. Um, and I, I, I know everyone's hungry and I won't take too much of your time and there, there will be a place to, to explain a bit more, but uh, essentially just picture a Monopoly board and I know what you're thinking, another Monopoly hack, so original, but uh, uh, yeah, there's more to that. So uh, there's two teams, uh, let's say uh, capitalism versus communism, or let's say green growth versus degrowth. And the point is like this uh, player identified seeming uh, like discursive binary that's that's out there, um, and we try to embody these. And what what we're competing for? It's an area capture game. We're competing for new economy narratives and concrete real world initiatives. Uh, so it's a fairly modular design, meaning that you can kind of plug and play uh, different initiatives. And I'm really interested in creating a kind of uh, specific to this event and the people here kind of version of the game and crowdsource with you some content to populate the game with and, and try it out uh, at one point. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it for now. Okay, I'm gonna be quick because I'm hungry. Uh, but yeah, oh, this is such a mess. Yeah, a anyway. Uh, I helped launch the Ethereum Caracas uh, chapter down there. We just got a we just got some money from Debcom, so we're going to do a bigger event kind of thing. And it will be nice to have some of you folks like presenting down there, so it's basically just that. And we do events with other folks like Aina, Singularity University, Global Ambassador, blah, 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 whatever, whatever. So we also expand into the Silicon Valley kind of thing sometimes. So yeah, just basically I will send some stuff on the chat and say like, hey, some folks that would like to present to mostly to people in Venezuela, ideally in Spanish for Latin America. It's not close to just to that. English is good. But yeah, that kind of opportunity kind of thing. And I'm thinking about my other hats. Uh, it through the week, um, you had some ideas on how to hack these kinds of things. I know also part of the United Nations Blockchain Commission for Sustainable Development. And we haven't done anything since 2018. We do a bigger event. Um, you had some ideas about hacking that kind of space. They're welcome. I'm in the process of trying to convince my boss. I don't know if he's my boss. It's like I'm kind of like, you know, the guy that runs stuff. <laughs> or doing like a digital event kind of thing. I, I think these are the kinds of projects that, you know, government falls from across the world should learn about. The Liechtenstein guy that were mentioned, he was there in 2018. Amazing guy. <laughs> what, what's his name? Thomas? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was an amazing presentation. Um, so those kinds of things. And then also, like, um, Stuart in the B Corporations movement, and we had a big working group called Imperative 21 with 70,000 companies all across the world. We'd love to have some, some of these ideas down there. We presented a paper to Biden kind of thing, a proposal for economics in the US. I didn't participate on that, to be honest. But anyway, we ha I had those, those kinds of open avenues besides Commons Stack. And yeah, how do I do those things? I had a collective down in Venezuela. So sometimes we do open end stuff, not necessarily blockchain, but yeah, and contract board as well for bigger companies and stuff down there. So yeah, anyway, just stuff. <laughs> Let's eat. <laughs>